when the Ark of the Covenant is finally revealed to the world, it will be the greatest archaeological bombshell in history, Michael Snyder reports. Let's remember the Ark of the Covenant contained three things. The two tablets that uh, Moses was given by God containing the Ten Commandments, the budding rod of Aaron, the first high priest of the tribes of Israel, and Aaron was seven years uh, older than uh, Moses, he was his older brother, and uh, a bowl of manna. Now, when the entire planet finally gets to see the Ark of the Covenant, it's going to change everything. The Ark of the Covenant disappeared from history more than 2,500 years ago, and many historians are convinced that it no longer exists. So when it's finally unveiled, it will be the greatest archaeological bombshell in human history. Over the years, there have been a lot of truly outlandish theories about location of the Ark of the Covenant, and those that have pursued such theories have always come up empty. That's because the true location of the Ark is not a mystery. As you will see below, the Temple Institute says that it knows exactly where it is, and I believe them, Michael Snyder says. There is no object that archaeologists would like to find more than the Ark of the Covenant. It was created more than 3,000 years ago, and the tablets on which the Ten Commandments were written are literally housed within it. For centuries, people have tried in vain to locate and recover the Bible's most sacred objects. Among the most sought after of these religious antiquities is the fa famed Ark of the Covenant. This legendary artifact is the ornate gilded case said to have been built some 3,000 years ago by the Israelites to house the stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments were written. Biblical accounts describe the Ark as large, about the size of a 19th century seaman's chest, made of gold-plated wood and topped with two large golden angels. It was carried using poles inserted through rings on its sides. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, since nobody has seen the Ark in more than 2,500 years, most historians believe that the Ark either disintegrated over time or was destroyed. Most historians think that if it existed, the more than 3,000-year-old relic either disintegrated over time or was destroyed, but this too is only speculation. For many, the final fate of the Ark remains a fascinating mystery and perhaps unsolved one. I had to smile when I read that, Michael Snyder says. All of those historians, quote-unquote, are going to be quite surprised when the Ark of the Covenant unveil is unveiled for the, for, the, for the entire world to see. The last time that anyone saw the Ark was more than 2,500 years ago. After the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC, the Ark completely disappeared from history. The last known location of the Ark of the Covenant was in the first temple's Holy of Holies. However, after the temple's destruction in 586 BC, it disappeared. But the Babylonians did not capture the Ark, so what happened to it? Many believe that it was hidden under the city of Jerusalem at some point prior to the Babylonian conquest, and apparently it's still sitting under the city of Jerusalem today. On their official website, the Temple Institute clearly states that they know exactly where it is located, quote-unquote. They say, while some claim to have evidence that the Ark is in Ethiopia, and of course moviegoers were treated to a fanciful version of the story in Raiders of the Lost Ark, in reality, the expression Lost Ark is not an accurate description for the Jewish people's point of view because, he said, they say, we have always known exactly where it is. So the Ark is hidden, and hidden quite well, but it is not lost. Tradition records that even as King Solomon built the first temple in Jerusalem, he already knew, through divine inspiration, that eventually it would be destroyed. Thus Solomon, the wisest of all men, oversaw the construction of a vast system of labyrinths, mazes, chambers, and corridors underneath the Temple Mount complex. He commanded that a special place be built in the bowels of the earth, where the sacred vessels of the Temple could be hidden in case of approaching danger. Midrashic tradition teaches that King Josiah of Israel, who lived about 40 years before the destruction of the First Temple, commanded the Levites to hide the Ark, together with the original menorah and several other items, 
in the secret hiding place which Solomon had prepared. This location is recorded in our sources, and today there are those who know exactly where this chamber is, and we know that the ark is still there, undisturbed and waiting for the day when it will be revealed. An attempt was made some few years ago to excavate towards the direction of this chamber. This resulted in a widespread Muslim uprest and, uh, unrest and rioting. They stand a great deal to lose if the ark is revealed, for it will prove to the whole world that there really was a holy temple, and thus that the Jews really do have a claim to the Temple Mount, the Hebrews that is. The Temple Institute is not saying that they have a vague idea that it is under the city of Jerusalem somewhere. They are telling us that they know precisely where it is hidden. And I believe them, Michael Snyder says. Previously, there have been reports that Rabbi Yehuda Getz was within 40 feet of the chamber where it was located in 1982. Rabbi Getz believes that in 1982 he was very close, within 40 feet, to finding the cave in which the ark resides. He was conducting a search in an old tunnel that had been filled with the debris of centuries which runs perpendicular to the western wall and under the Temple Mount. However, when the Muslims discovered that there were diggings being conducted under the Dome of the Rock, they threatened a general riot and diggings were stopped. The rabbi explains that for the sake of maintaining peace with their Muslim neighbors, the Israelis had to reseal the, the entrance to the tunnel and it remains blocked up to this day. This is one thing to know, it's one thing to know where the Ark is, but actually getting it out from where it is hidden will be another matter entirely. This investigative archaeologist, Harry Muscoff, has accurately noted, as he noted, getting approval from all of the necessary authorities would not be easy. Now about those subterranean tunnel entrances, even if one would theoretically obtain all the permits from the Israeli Antiquities Authority, the Jordanian WHUF, as well as the Halakchik permission from the chief rabbis of our day, it is simply too dangerous from a spiritual as well as physical perspective to enter into these tunnels, which I delineate in my book, Michael Snyder says. Moskov is completely convinced that the Ark is sitting there ready to be revealed. In fact, he believes that the Ark is directly behind the gigantic 570-ton stone that was specifically placed there to protect it. Moskov told CBN News to the spot, he took the news to the spot where he believes the Ark really lies. He believes a key clue lies behind a 570-ton rock and says high-tech research tools give credence to his theory. Two years ago, he said, there were tests done by the University of Nebraska, sonar tests using electromagnetic waves. They actually found what's called a storage space across from here, said Moskov. So actually, there was a purpose for putting this giant stone, this massive slab here. One of the reasons, in my opinion, is to protect whatever it is on the other side. And according to my theory of where the Ark was actually buried by King Josiah, I think it was 568 BC, in back of these boulders, these massive stones, he said. In my opinion, my opinion is that the Ark has not been revealed to the world yet because it is not, it has not been time for that to happen yet, but could that time be coming soon? The Temple Institute knows where the Ark is, and they are not going to be able to keep a lid on that secret forever. At some point, the Ark will once again see the light of day, and then everything will change. There is actually an ancient Jewish document entitled Treatise of the Vessels that say that the Ark of the Covenant will not be revealed until the day of the coming of the Messiah. One text called the Treatise of the Vessels saying that the Ark shall not be revealed until the day of the coming of the Messiah, the Son of David. We are certainly lying, living in the days just before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was discussing, as I was discussing my latest book, I believe that it will not be too long before the Ark is finally revealed. One of the reasons why the Ark has been on my heart lately is because the day of Pentecost is coming up. On the day of Pentecost, we remember the covenant that God made with his people at Mount Sinai, and we also remember how the Holy Spirit visited the apostles in the book of Acts. 
When the Ark of the Covenant is finally revealed, it will confirm that the covenant that God made with his people at Mount Sinai really does exist. And all of the historians that told us that the Ark no longer exists, Moses was not a real historical fi figure and the exodus out of Egypt was just a legend, will have to come up with entirely new theories. This is by Michael Snyder on End of the American Dream. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. This is by Michael Snyder about the author, Michael Snyder's extremely controversial new book entitled Chaos is available in paperback and for Kindle on Amazon. He's also written seven other books that are available on Amazon, including End Times, Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophets of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters. When you purchase any of Michael's books, you help to support the work he's doing. You can also get his articles by email as soon as he publishes them by subscribing to his Substack newsletter. Michael has published thousands of articles on the Economic Class blog, End of the American Dream, and the Most Important News. And he always freely and happily allows others to republish those articles on their own websites. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, we strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.